What's going on, Darius? What's up? You? What's the word? What's up, man? I yeah, the word, man. This is this is the thing. Uh, I do respect you a lot, um, for sure, as a um, successful black man, no doubt. Um, I caught the uh, lead attorney live, and I watched the whole thing. And you watched had some disagreements. Uh, was that like six hours well, I'm not gonna like say that? disagreement. Yeah, yeah, man. Long I mean, stream, I just bro. let it play, I like, and I woo. did my thing. Did my. It was. It was, bro. It, it was, man. And I appreciate you for hanging in there because uh, I know you was waiting in the waiting room to get on. But um, I'm not going to say I have disagreement, but I felt that maybe some of your arguments were, was disingenuous. Like what? Because to me, um, okay, good point. Like the whole luck thing. Now, the attorney whole point of the whole luck thing uh, was simply to say that as far as marriage, because the whole topic was marriage, it was the, the point that, you know, selecting a spouse, um, there are some uncontrollable factors that go into selecting a spouse. And like, you, like there what? is good, like um, when you were born, like for example, your spouse, you had no control over when she was born, where she was born. You had no control over the environmental factors that allowed for you to even meet her. But That's, as awesome as that is, as awesome as that is, she will tell you that I tell her when we have certain conversations, I was going to be awesome anyway. And anybody that came into my sphere was going to be awesome as a result of rocking with me. So it's, I still don't even leave that up to luck. Like I acknowledge how great she is and I value add that she is to my life. But I'm fully confident. I'm 100% confident that whatever wife I decided to choose, it was going to end up awesome no, no matter what. So still, luck plays no role. And I still don't subject myself to the idea of luck. It's all about being intentional. And if, 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 if my wife is an anomaly, then why do every single person in my sphere have the exact same results? Well, that's a good point. Your sphere. But the lead attorney, from his perspective, is looking at the 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 world as a whole and the numbers the numbers say otherwise because divorce rates are like 80 percent so of all, but divorce rates are going down that's a and b that still is operating of a out of a mindset of duress because anybody just like the lead attorney started to look for i seen him make an argument about well i mean what about the kid that's born in congo the basis of the argument and we set the foundation of it was to speak to the majority, right? So that's A. But B, on okay. top of that, the questions that the lead attorney was asking was not necessarily to find out more information about how you can be more successful in marriage. The questions that he was asking was to support his argument. And so to come to come to the table from the from that perspective means that it's not a conversation, it's a debate at that point. Because if he would have asked me, okay, Anton, what is the key in, this, in the method to be successful when it comes to marriage? It turns that conversation on its head completely because we not, listen, most people are, um, most people have stole something in their life. Correct? I guess, yeah. Right? So if most people have stole something in their life, does that mean that I look for um, that statistic in order to support my argument when I'm trying to make a case of whether or not people are good or bad? So it's a factor. Not really. It doesn't. because, And the reason that I'm saying is, to be, is because two things can be true at the same time, but then at the same time, it doesn't discredit the idea that I'm still successfully married. And when we have that conversation, again, the questions was to support his argument, which fell flat in my opinion, but it doesn't st it still doesn't answer the question or address the, the video topic, which was the foundation of why he did that live stream in the first place, was to disprove the idea that you can't be successful in marriage in the same way that you are like the, the, the pros versus the cons. And he never asked me any of what the pros are. That was the whole point of the video. Well, it's it's, it's not his position. So. Him asking you the pros and cons with well, the pros of marriage. I mean, he's a, a divorce attorney, so he's coming at the position. He's coming at the opposite position from you from the beginning. 
Correct. The video is about what you said in regards to marriage and what you said to other people in regards to marriage. And he's but giving an opposition to that position. He never gave you. an opposition because he never disproved it. He only talked about what he felt. His whole, the foundation of his whole argument from the very beginning was Anton was doesn't see how broken these guys are in court. It doesn't disprove that mar you can be successfully married. You can, but he's saying that you're leaving off the, you're, you're basing, you're saying that a successful marriage is something that can happen without any other factors and nothing else can factor in. The success of marriage is totally dependent on you. You make your marriage successful and why yes. most of it, I would argue most of it, I would say if I had to give a percentage. I would say 70 to 80% of marriage is dependent on the person, but you got to understand you're in marriage with someone else. It's always that 20 to 15%. There are just factors, things that happen that you either have to roll with or not. And the people in my circle and my family is betting a hundred for a hundred. That's your circle. That's the point. But it's everybody <laughs> not in your circle. So why aren't if people? That that's my question. So why aren't people asking me how I'm doing it successfully instead of le instead of leaning on whatever it is they need in order to make themselves feel better? Ask me how you can be successful. Listen, if if I'm okay. trying to okay. if, if if I know that the majority of the people that's about to take this professor's course fail, right? You can look and see up the statistics, rate your teacher, all that other type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing I'm gonna try to figure out is how, what did the people that were successful at his class do? How were they successful? I'm not leaning on the idea that I'm gonna fail. I'm trying to understand how I can be successful. And nobody is operating in that mindset. It's an abundance mindset in which you look at the glass. The glass is where it's at, right? If you look at statistically, you can say, Right. The glass is the liquid in the glass is right here in the middle. But the reason that they say some people look at it from a glass half full or a glass half empty mentality is because life is 10 percent of what happens to you and 90 percent of how you react to it. I control the narrative. I control the outcome. Nobody else. That's not luck. I, and then I cited this, the, the statistics where my wife came on here specifically said and he had no argument mm -hmm. for it. I said all of the things that y'all identify as far as red flags when it come to women, my wife had single parent household, mother never married, um, broken father, whatever, so on and so forth. All of her friends, whatever, raised in the hood. All, well, of these things, for, all of these things for some reason never played any role or factor in the success of my marriage and nobody asked me why but let me ask you a question would you consider that particular circumstance in the majority or the minority would the majority of people with your wife's circumstance have successful marriages or people in your in your wife's circumstance have unsuccessful marriages as the as a majority as a whole what, what that, would doesn't, you say? that doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because the How's same that? way it doesn't matter for that professor that I'm trying to understand how it passes his class. I'm not looking for what the majority is doing. I'm trying to understand how the winners did it. I don't That's look for what the majority is. I'm only looking to be solution oriented. I'm only looking to see how I can get rich. I know that the majority of the people, what is majority of people in the world is not rich. How did I get rich? Because I never was looking at how the majority of the people did it. I was looking at how the winners did it. That's what I'm saying. It's a way in which you can do it. It's a blueprint that you can take and implement in your life. And most people complain about billionaires, but I'm telling you that they use the same laws that apply to you. So instead of trying to understand how they did it, they trying to just complain about why they are where they are. And winners, winners have a different mentality. And in order for us to be successful, we at first start here first. You got to stop looking at what the majority is doing and start looking at what the winners are doing. I'm never caring about what the majority is doing. I guess I, I, I understand your position. Um, that, that really wasn't necessarily my point, but I, I I hear you, bro. I hear you. What do you think? I think that anybody plays on the laws of averages. Um, 
if you go to Vegas and let's say you have good odds, you're going to play those odds. If you have bad odds, you're probably going to reconsider playing those odds. So but again, you supporting his argument when it comes to luck. I'm saying don't gamble. It's a different mentality. But you're you're going to have to gamble at some point. You're going to have to have some there's there's in your businessman. So there's always mm-hmm. some type of risk involved in being in business. Correct. But which is you, interesting because that's the same argument I made yesterday when I said that nobody is saying don't start a business. We all understand that more than 75 percent of businesses fail, but we don't make the same argument when it comes to business as we do when it comes to marriage. You'll cite the data, you'll cite the sources, you'll lean on the majority. But people that are looking to start businesses are not paying attention to what all of the majority is doing. They're looking to figure out how they can leverage level themselves up in order to get rich. And you're driven by a completely different factor in mindset when you determine to be successful versus somebody that's trying to lean on data in order to justify their arguments, which ultimately lead them into the victim Olympics. I don't want to be in that. Mind. I don't want to be in that group. I don't want to be in a victim Olympics. I failed at, at close to 80 businesses before I really hit. I wasn't going to stop starting businesses. I, I got rich. I won. I was intentional. I didn't care how many times I failed because I understood that all of those experiences led me to where I am now and that it helped me to understand what I did wrong. But I was still always looking to understand what the solution was, which led me into being successful. It's an abundance mindset. Okay, I I hear that. But again, you just said that you've 80 percent of the businesses that you fail, you start you were in over eighty businesses failed before I hit. Absolutely. And that is the same concept in relationships too. like people have the when they get married, they have get married in the intention of it working. But sometimes it doesn't they don't even and understand some, the concept of marriage. That's my whole point. That's not you're true. Not, you're things not asking happen. the right questions. You're not asking things, the right questions. No, things you're not asking things the right questions. Happen. You're not asking the right and, questions. Then Beans why are why are why is everybody that I know going back two to three generations that I can trace, why are they all batting a hundred? Because that's all the people you know. We, that's not. But did all we the did we get lucky? But did we get lucky, or is it or, or is it, or are we intentional when we bat? Good fortune plays a part. <laughs> okay, all it right. does. Okay. Think about this. Think about. Let's say you have a millionaire, and he has a and he has a beautiful wife, has a beautiful family, everything's great. They bat a hundred, batting a thousand, as you say. And let's say somehow COVID happens. He gets COVID. He gets really, really sick. He's unable to recover. The the he's unable to continue his businesses. Things start to drop. Uh, the wife is under duress. The kids are are you looking how, at like how my know. how my real life was when I went broke in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and I had to move back in my mom's basement, and I had a new a newborn daughter on the way. My wife was pregnant. And we went completely broke. I got all of my cars repossessed and everything like that. But for some reason, my marriage has still worked like my real life. Right. But that's Antoine, Antoine, excuse me. That's great. But to say that that can be projected on a wide scale is unrealistic. It can as, because as, as there, was, there, were, there were other factors that you're not asking me about that allowed for our marriage to continue to blossom even during its darkest times. Like what? Like me being the man that I'm supposed to be and and, and and continuously, relentlessly delivering on the things that I say I'm going to do and being a reflection of the thing that I was looking to attract. Helping her to understand and because she's seen something in me and she believes in me and she understands my leadership because I was consistent across the board even when we went broke. That was one of many factors that went into the fact that she understood like very early in our marriage. She understood we don't get divorced. We don't break our vows. When we take these vows, it's not an if and it's not a mm-hmm. plan B. Plan B is to see plan A out no matter what happens. Right. Till death do us part. The foundation of our marriage is rooted in our friendship first, not based off of how we felt about each other. It had nothing to do with love first. Love came later. Right. Spirituality, 
friendship. This is why I tell people not to date. Now I'm giving you some solutions. I tell people don't date because you're dating their representative and the thing at, that you're placing at the top of your list, the foundation of it is going to crumble. When you just include people in your network and you just become great friends with people, the person that you're supposed to be with will reveal themselves to you and you'll truly understand who they are. You'll be equally yoked. And all of those things, in addition to even more, if you want to continue to have those conversations, ultimately contribute to our marriage being able to last through all of this little fickle stuff that people break up for every single day. We bat 100 out of 100. We don't miss. It's not luck. It's intentional. Okay. Good point. Good point. I would say uh, I would attribute um, a lot to her faithfulness in the marriage because again you're not the only person that's been in this situation and you're not the only person that's married no matter if, she fa- if, if, if she cheated on me guess what we gonna figure that out when i say we not getting divorced we not getting divorced we gonna figure that out we proactive we don't make mistakes bro I, I, there is I, no I, factor I that you can name you, that is going to change the dynamics of how we operate we are going to win people. We are you going can't control to win. people. Then why, God am forbid. Bat- then why am I batting a hundred out of a hundred? Now, and, and I'm and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get you to bat anything less than a hundred out of a hundred. I you want you to. That, you that's that's not my position. My yep. position is that the point was that you are an anomaly. I'm and not. If, I'm telling if, you that I can duplicate this in your life. So when you get done with your position. Then come to the other side of the, of the coin and say, OK, Anton, you know what? If I am looking to get married, give me some insight on how I can do things a certain type of way in order to sh- ensure that I'm successfully married, not just getting mm-hmm. married with the potential of having something go disastrous for me. And then when we get done arguing on positions and we get done debating, I'm telling mm-hmm. you, it's better on this side and you need to come to my side of the table and I can give you the game. I promise you. <laughs> OK, when we get done. I mean, this is cool and this is fun. But I'm telling you, bro, I can change your life when it comes to being intentional. And and the more you understand how I move, the less you'll believe in luck. I don't I, that luck part. I think you mischaracterize luck. It, everyone has serendipitous, uncontrollable circumstances in life that creates a starting point for them. Like when lead attorney said you were born in 1980. So you were, so? you were, you were born in a time where a black man in America could be successful. He wasn't born. Then why are, why were black people rights. overwhelmingly more successful prior to me being born than, than how people are and they're freer, even freer than they are than they have ever been today. Black people are worse off today than when they, when they actually, if you look at 20, 30 years before I was even born, black people were way more successful, had more wealth. They were more successfully married. They had a better family structure. How is it that we're freer than we are today, yet we use that as evidence in order to support our argument to illustrate that we are lucky when they were less lucky in your, according to how you're defining it, but more successful. That's a good point. That speaks to the outcome. I'm speaking to the starting point. The starting point is much easier for a black man today than it was back then. Now, the outcomes is, like you said, is contributed to your own efforts with your starting point. But most people don't have control over their starting point. That's the whole point. The I fact don't care that you about my still, starting point, I'm still going to beat you. But that's not that's but yes. that's the. You know what? I, you know who I look to. Part. You know who I look to. I didn't look to LeBron James. I looked to Dan Gilbert. Dan Gilbert is short. He's he had nothing necessarily going for him from a physical perspective. LeBron James is start um, or his, his his gifts and his talents, the lot that he was given in life as far as his ability to be able to be successful when it comes to what we define to be successful was much greater as far as his probability than than, than Dan Gilbert. If you understand Dan Gilbert's story. Dan Gilbert is much richer than LeBron James ever will be. Why is that? He owns a team. However, but how did he own the team? How did he get to own the team? How did he start Quicken Loans? How did he start Rocket Mortgage? How did he get there? 
We not asking those questions. I don't want you to study LeBron. I want you to study Dan Gilbert. It'll, it'll change your mentality about what you feel towards this whole situation and what you define as luck versus being intentional. That's not my point. My, my point is that Dan Gilbert had a starting point. His starting point may have been worse than LeBron, but better than someone else. The outcome is the outcome. The outcome could be contribute to your hard work. It could be contribute to good luck, bad luck. We don't know. But to say that one person can 100% control every factor of their life, control every factor of their environment to be successful is disingenuous. Why? I do we it control. every day. Hey. That I, I, go on I, these, I, I go on these shows and I show up and I control the conversation. Every single time. I control the narrative. Every okay. one of them. Name one that I show up on that I don't control the narrative. Well, yesterday you kind of controlled the narrative. Filibustered, you filibustered a little bit. Bro. I control the narrative. You, you filibustered a lot with on, on an, that with show. The, with an attorney, I controlled the conversation and the narrative. I I would disagree with control the narrative. I, would I didn't say control that, that conversation. Let's be honest. Hold on. Let's be real. I didn't control that conversation yesterday. Now, I will give you credit. You <laughs> took initiative <laughs> over the conversation, but the content of what you were saying was filibustered. Listen, you can frame it however you want to frame it, but when it comes back down to it, winners win, losers lose, and that that duress mentality that a lot of people subject themselves to will be your biggest downfall. It's all on you, fam. It's not up to any Bro, other factor, any other factor outside of what you determine is your success story. You control the narrative, nobody else. Good talking with you, Anton, man. You the man, bro. I respect you. Thank you, my friend. Sure. Yes, sir.